Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and today we're going to take a look at Jupyter Notebook. I'm just going to kind of teach you an overview of how you'd install it and use Jupyter Notebook. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that we will do is we will install Jupyter Notebook. So normally what I recommend doing is creating a Python virtual environment using uh, Python's venv module, venv, or by using virtual the virtual env package. And we'll call it jupy. And so what this command does is it tells Python to run the, the venv module and uh, create a folder called jupy, and it copies uh, Python 3.8 into that folder along with some other necessary files. So let's go in there quick. And we see there's a bin folder in there and include a lib and a py venv config file. To activate our uh, virtual environment, you just do source bin activate on Linux type environments. And you'll notice over here it says jupy. That tells us that the um, Python virtual environment is now activated. So one of the other files that's included in our virtual environment is pip. So now we should be able to do pip install Jupyter to get that installed for us. And the reason I'm installing Jupyter into a Python virtual environment is that, as you can see, it installs a lot of dependencies. If you install it to your local Python, you'll get all of these dependencies installed too, which you may or may not want. So it's usually recommended that if you're trying something new in Python and it's a third-party package like Jupyter, you install it in a Python virtual pa uh, environment so you can test it and make sure you want it. Okay, so now we have it. To actually use Jupyter Notebook, you have to type the Jupyter command, which is now available to us because we just installed it. And then you need to type the word notebook after that. This will start the Jupyter server, which will load up in whatever your active or your current uh, default browser is. In my case, it's Firefox. Most of the time, it'll load to localhost colon 8888 and to the tree folder. This is the same folder that we're in, so you can see it still has the bin, Etsy, all those other folders that we just uh, created a minute ago. But there's no uh, there's no notebook files in here yet because we haven't created one. To create a notebook file, you go over here to New, and you can choose to create a notebook. You note that it says Python 3 here. Um, Jupyter Notebook can be set up so it can run with multiple, uh, you can create notebooks in multiple languages. Um, Python is the default one that it works with, but it, uh, you can also install uh, what they call kernels. So this is a Python 3 kernel for your notebook. You can install Julia as a programming language. It supports PHP and Ruby. Um, C++ was added a couple of years ago. There's, there's, uh, there's dozens of languages or kernels that you can install. Let's go ahead and uh, run a Python 3 um, notebook. This will create an untitled IPYNB, so IPython Notebook is what, what that stands for, really. Because originally Jupyter was called IPython Notebook, not Jupyter Notebook. And then when they started adding new languages, they changed the name to Jupyter. Okay, so now we have an untitled Jupyter Notebook. If you'd like to give it a, uh, give it a name, you can click on Untitled there, and we can just rename it to whatever we want. You can also change the name over in File, and rename. Um, these files control, uh, this file menu controls everything to do with your notebook pretty much. Um, I do want to go back to the terminal quick. So if I were to try to load this URL in another browser, it'll ask you for a token. And if you don't know what your, what your token is, you're gonna be kind of lost. So just go back to your terminal and you can find the token information printed out there to copy and paste in. All right, anyway. So now we have a Jupyter Notebook, and we named it hello. Uh, the default cell type, which is, this is what this is a cell here. We can add more cells just by clicking the plus, plus button. And we can delete them by hitting the scissors button, which is cut, really, but it deletes as well if you don't paste it. All right, so it defaults to code. There are a couple of other types of cells you can create. Markdown and code are the two that you'll probably use the most. Uh, raw NB convert is for telling uh, the Jupyter Notebook how to convert your notebook into something else. So you can actually export Jupyter Notebooks to other formats like LaTeX, PDF, HTML, etc. So this 
particular cell type kind of gives you more control over how the output looks. And header doesn't really do anything. It is actually deprecated. It will tell you that you need to use uh, markdown cells instead, and it will automatically change it to markdown and slap a uh, heading one markdown keyword in there instead. We're going to start with code, though. So let's go back and change this back to code, and we'll just play around with it. So first thing to know is you can import Python modules here. So like import sys, we can um, we can run any any regular Python commands within our within this uh, cell. So if I do dir, it'll tell me all of the properties about uh, the sys module or the methods, etc. Anyway, to run the cell, you can hit run, or you can press shift and enter. Let's run it. And it immediately gives us an output of all the stuff about the sys module. Um, Jupyter Notebook is kind of cool in that you can set up um, variables like x equals 11 and then access them in a different cell. So the cells share memory. However, if you don't run this, this the cells in order, then the next cell may not know what x is. So right now we've run it. That's why you see a 2 here. It's been run. So we should be able to access it, access x in the second cell. But let's say we have c and we make it equal to 11. And we go ahead and we add another cell. And we try to print c out. Note that these two have run because they have numbers right here. 2 and 3 have run in order. This one is blank and so is this one. So if we just run this cell before we run cell 3, I don't think it's going to work correctly. Yep, we get a name error. Uh, C is not defined. However, if we go back here and rerun it and then run it again, now C is shared amongst the cells and we can access it again. That's a very common gotcha with Jupyter Notebook. So if you run into weird name errors where you can clearly just see that something is already defined or imported, but for some reason the cell isn't able to access it, it's probably because you didn't run the cell or cells previous to that particular cell. All right. Let's go ahead and get rid of these cells, and we will show how to do Markdown. Markdown is a markup language, kind of, kind of like HTML. Uh, GitHub supports it. Uh, most websites now are starting to add support for Markdown in some form or fashion if they're programming related. Uh, Jupyter Notebook is really handy for doing Markdown in because you can use it to kind of document your code. So you can say, like, this is a variable, and uh, the code will convert it when you run it into just a nice little piece of text. If you double click on the cell, you can start editing it again. And we can add different heading levels. So this is like heading 3, and this is heading 2. And it will just kind of auto show you what it will look like. And then you can just write your, write your code down here in the next cell. And you know you can basically just document your code that way. Um, let's look at a couple of other quick examples of how you can use uh, um, the markdown. So if you need to create, like, say this is a variable, and we want to add a bulleted list of, or actually, yes, uh, let's talk about strings. Or we'll just pretend we're making a little, a little program to show other people what we want to do. All right. Strings have methods, and they have um, a data type. And we can talk about concatenating strings if we wanted to. So you can create a list using uh, asterisks at the beginning or dashes. Either way will work. If you want to uh, bold a word, we could say uh, this wor word is bolded or bold. Or we can bold it using double underscores. Or we can do italics using just one um, asterisk. Or one underscore. Oops. And it'll just convert it the way you expect it to. You can use uh, Markdown to insert images. 
uh, hyperlinks. Um, you can actually uh, put in code. So let's say we want to uh, add some Python code. It'll automatically uh, convert it and make it look pretty. It'll have the syntax highlighting, but it won't autocomplete for you. So let's say we want to do sys.path something. And then we end it with three triple quotes. And it'll just give you a nice, nicely formatted block of code. Now, obviously, one of the best things about this is you can you can make this XML or PHP, and it'll highlight it appropriately if it's if it's supported by Jupyter. So that lets you kind of show off other programming uh, examples without being able to run them. Um, so let's see what else can we do with this. Let's go ahead and look at the menus quick. So here you can create a new notebook. Or you could go back to your home page, uh, the server page, and go back and do new again. You could copy a notebook. You could do add checkpoints. So let's say I, I feel like I've done a really good job here, but I'm not sure what to do next. You can do save and checkpoint, and that creates a series of checkpoints. Like right now, it's got an auto saved checkpoint that I could revert to. Um, here's where you could uh, uh, export the Jupyter notebook into other formats like ASCII doc, LaTeX, HTML, Markdown, uh, PDF. Uh, note that if you're going to do LaTeX or PDF, you need to have LaTeX installed. I think on Windows it comes automatically, but on Linux and Mac you may have to install some extra libraries. Okay. Um, the edit menu offers a lot of different options. You can cut and paste cells, tell it where to paste the cells, you can delete cells here. Uh, move cells up and down. So let's say we want to reorder these. Um, you can say move cell down, and it'll move it down. You can also use the up and down arrows to move the cells around. You can merge the cells together from the edit menu and do some find and replace. That even gives you a good way to insert images if you want to. Um, the headers are for toggling like the toolbar, um, the header itself. Maybe we don't want the name up here. Uh, you can toggle line numbers on and off for the cells. And then you have a cell toolbar. Um, it lets you play around to different settings that you can just mess with. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about those right now. Um, here's so different ways to run the cells. You can run the selected cells, run all of the cells at once, run all the cells above or below the selected cell, change the cell type from within the menus, and since some of these cells have output, well, we don't have any right here, but let's say we have uh, print something. This cell has output, the word something. So if we want to clear that, you can go up here and tell it to clear current outputs, or you can just have it clear all, clear all the outputs. That's useful if you've done a lot of testing in your notebook and then you, you're ready to share it. But you don't want to share all the outputs, so you just clear it. Um, the kernel menu is not something you'll probably use all the time, but occasionally you might get the get a cell in a weird state where it just like it for some reason it won't recognize that you've imported something, or I don't know something has happened on your file system and Jupyter gets confused. Usually, what you need to do is you need to restart the kernel, and that'll fix it. Occasionally, you'll have to restart the server, which means going into your terminal and hitting control C and telling the, ser the, the server that it's, you need to shut down. But most of the time, you can, you can get away with just uh, restarting the kernel here. If you can't, you can shut down here as well. Widgets are for embedding widgets. You can kind of play around with that. I'm going to talk about widgets in a different tutorial. And then help. Uh, probably the thing I like, I find most useful about help, because most of these are just like links to notebooks and NumPy and SciPy and stuff. Uh, the, the coolest thing in here, in my opinion, are the keyboard shortcuts. So you can look at the current keyboard shortcuts by clicking there and scrolling through and just learning all the keyboard, keyboard shortcuts you can use. Or you can edit the keyboard shortcuts here as well. You also have a nice little quick tour of the user interface that I'm kind of giving you myself. Okay, so that's those are all the, the basics that you can do with your notebook. Let's go back to the server real quick. I want to show you a couple of things here. So in your server view, you can create text files. 
but just for and maybe you want to read it read from a text file for some reason this is a text file and then we save it notice it's called untitled text if we close this there's now an untitled text file in here you can also create a folder if you needed to save up save your files into uh, you can actually run a, a pretty full-fledged terminal in your browser inside of Jupyter Notebook. You can use that to check out things, get our full, uh, fully qualified path, just kind of play around in there if you need to. And then you can check and see what's running right now. We have one uh, notebook running. This will show multiple notebooks or whatever else. This is also a way you can go in and shut down um, items. So, you know, if you actually close your tab, it's still running. So let's go ahead and shut that down so it's not running anymore. And let's shut down that terminal too. Uh, clusters is, refers to the IPython parallel uh, item, which we're not going to talk about right now. That's something, something else you can go digging for if you need to. Anyway, that kind of gives you the basics of how you might use a Jupyter Notebook. I hope you found this really interesting. And if you have any uh, questions, go ahead and ask me in the comments. I'll see you next time.